Now that we have our webhook API set up, now we're ready to set up our private methods, our business logic, and I have our placeholders right here. So these are the three private methods we'll be setting up in this video. Now this could vary tremendously depending on your application, how to set this up. Now there's different ways you can set up your webhook APIs. You could create a individual API for one individual event. So you can have an API called subscription created webhook or something like that. And the sole job of that one API is just to handle this one event right here. And that's nice because you won't overpower a API by having it handle multiple events. But in this case, we're just listening for three different Stripe events. So we'll just use this one API. So down here is our business logic. Now this could vary tremendously depending on your own application. For these tutorials, I'm gonna keep it simple. So when we create a customer, we'll update the customer ID. And we'll check out the database in a second. Whenever we add a subscription, we'll add that to the database, the entire subscription. And then if we ever update the subscription, we'll make sure our subscription in the database is updated. Let's take another look at our database tables and see how we can update our database. If you're following along with the project you got off GitHub for this course and you did your migration, you should find a subscribers table within your database. And what we're trying to get from the subscription, the Stripe subscription object is a few properties, the customer ID, the status, and the current period end. Now you can grab more things from the subscription Stripe object, but this is all we need to accomplish what we're trying to do in this video. So when a subscription is created, we'll update this table within our database. And if they update their subscription, we'll get the subscription and update it. Also, we'll add the customer ID to the user as well. That's how I'm gonna link them up. So in this case, inside the ASP.NET users, if we open this up, and the customer ID is right here. We added this in a prior video and did the migration for that. So when the user creates an account, and then they go through the checkout process, we'll go ahead and we'll add their customer ID to their account. And that's how we'll map it back to the subscribers table later on. I already went ahead and set up a repository for dealing with our subscribers table. Let's check that out next. To find the repository for dealing with our subscriptions, you can find that under the data folder and repository and go ahead and open up the subscription repository. And inside this repository, we'll be using a few methods like create async to create a subscriber. And that's this method here. And then to get a individual subscriber, we'll get them by the customer ID. So we'll be using this method and all we need to do is pass in the ID and that's that one. And then to update a subscriber, we'll use the update async and that's this method here. So to use this repository, we'll need to bring it into our payments controller. Now I already went ahead and set up this within our startup class. So we don't have to do that step. So let's add this to the payment controller. And then within the constructor at the top, right inside of our payment controller right here, we'll add in our subscriber repository. So I'll add that towards the end right here. And we'll bring that in from our API data repositories, set up our private property. And now we have access to our subscriber repository. If we go back down to our private methods, now we're ready to start setting up our private methods. So I'll minimize our APIs and so we don't have so much scrolling. And let's start inside of the add customer ID to user. So I'll replace this with a pre-made snippet. If you would like to copy and paste as well, you'll find a snippets link in the help tab. If you're watching this on oopcoders.com and then you can just click on the snippets link and you can copy and paste as well. Also, you'll find this link on the home page if you go to video 10 and click on the snippets link and then you can copy and paste as well. So what we're doing here is we're getting the user from the database and we're using the user manager we're already pulling in. The user manager has a find by email and then we pass in the customer email. The customer is being passed in right here. So that's how we're, we're getting the customer. The reason we're getting this error here is this needs to be an async method. So I'll add that here and task. That should take care of our error. Then I do a check to see if the user exists, if it's not null. And then if it's not null, we add the customer ID to the customer and then we update the customer. 
Here, you don't actually have to leave a message. I'm just gonna leave a message so we can see what's happening. And then if there's any errors, I have a try block. And if there's any errors, we'll log that out as well so we can see that in the console. That's it for adding a customer ID to the user. Next, let's add the subscription to the database if a new subscription is created. So I'll replace this block of code right here. So the first thing we do here is we set up our subscriber object and this gets passed on to our crate async later on. And we get the subscription ID, the customer ID, the status, we just set that to active right away. And then the current period n, we get that from our subscription as well. And we're getting an error here. The reason is we need to make this an async method again. Now here we're just doing the bare minimum, but you could always like send out an email or something like that. So I added this comment here. Like there's many different things you could do after a customer creates a subscription. What I personally have done is I set up a MailChimp account where we send out an email whenever a subscription is created. But here you could do many different things. Now if there's any errors, we log that out so we can see that happening as well. Now whenever a subscription is updated, we wanna handle that as well. So I'll replace this with another snippet. And the first thing we'll do here is we'll get the subscription from the database. And let's take care of this error again. So we'll make this an async method. And task. So we get the subscription from the database by the subscription ID. We double check to see, make sure it's not null. If it's not null, then we update the status, the current period end, and then we update the subscription. And again, you don't have to add this, but I add this so we can see it when we're testing. And then if there's any errors, we handle that as well, writing out the message for that. So that should update our subscription. Now, since these are all async, we wanna make sure we add it within our API. So let's open up the webhook API and add on to here await. That should take care of your green underline there. And I'll do that to all three. Await and await. Now we're ready for testing. Save it and restart your backend. Also, make sure you fire up your Stripe CLI. So I'll go ahead and fire that up. So Stripe, listen, forward to, then the API we've been working in, the webhook API. Hit enter. Okay, so that is running. And let's create a new membership. So if we go through the checkout process again, and I'll enter in the same information. Now this is very important that you pick an email that actually exists in your database. The reason is, is we're checking the database by the user's email. So if it doesn't exist in the database, nothing's gonna happen. So I know this customer OOP coders actually exist in our database. And then I'll fill out the rest like I normally do. And then we open up the PowerShell. And as you can see, everything is working and we get sent off to the membership created page. Now let's look into our database and see our new subscription. Back here in our database, we should have a brand new subscriber now. If we go browse data and you look for the subscriber table and we do. So now we have a subscription in our database and then this ID right here should match the ID that is inside of your user because we updated that as well. So if we go inside of the ASP.NET users and our customer ID is J4YU, if we go back here again, and it's J4YU. So we also updated the user as well with the customer ID. So we have all this information now in our database. Now let's actually use it where we update a token when the user logs in with their subscription information and we'll do that in the next video.